Good evening, everybody. Let's start with playoff football. It's top-ranked Albia and Iowa Falls Alden. Albia in blue. It's Bryce Leshen with the block and the recovery. It's so nice we get to see it twice. You know what? Defense wins championships on offense. It was all Albia. Johnny Sinat will find the end zone then. It's Brett Freshwater who put six more points on the scoreboard. Check this out. Great blocking on this play. And Freshwater picks up the first down and more. Albia would go on to win it big, 56 to nothing. The Beacon Panthers open up postseason play at a two seed hosting the six and three Linville Sully Hawks. Trevor Northup and Pekin warming up for the second half, trailing 22 to 14. First play, Northup hands off to Chase Copeland, and he's able to gain a yard on first down, but that's all he would get. Third down now for the Panthers from the 36 yard line. Northup draws back to pass. He rolls out right, evades a tackler, and then lets one rip for Keaton Wynn, who flies through the air and makes the catch. He then breaks three tackles and goes into the end zone. The Panthers, however, fail a two point conversion, and it's only 22 to 20. Third down now for Linville Sully on their drive. Tyler Van Zant hands off to Caden Dustbergen for the three yards. So now it's fourth down for the Hawks. Van Zant with a play fake. He drops back and Keaton Wynn, who is a pretty tall player, isn't tall enough. And Van Zant finds Sage Erzman wide open in the end zone. It's 29 to 22. And the failed two point would come back to haunt the Panthers as the final score is 36 to 34 Linville Sully. The high-scoring Moravia Mohawks begin the playoffs with a home matchup against Murray. First quarter, Murray driving. It's Fisher Decker. Fix the handoff, calls his own number, runs to the outside, and fights his way across the plane for the touchdown. Saints get the two-point conversion, and they lead 8-0. Ensuing kickoff, Sam Close of Moravia fields it, follows his blockers, and he is off to the races. 90 yards for the touchdown. Mohawks go for two. They don't get it. It's eight to six. Murray, second quarter, Saints with the ball. This time it's Jack Jones. Gets the rock, shoots through the gap, puts on the Jets, and he outruns Briar Cochran on his way to the house. 14 to six. Murray, next possession for Moravia. Not to be outdone. It's Sam Close again, right past yours truly, on his way to the end zone for six. Moravia wins big, 64 to 26. Up north from Pekin, the Sigourney Kyoto Cobras host the Hudson Pirates in a tough two and three seed matchup. First quarter action in this one, the first offensive play for either team. Blake Hoddle hands off to Nick Angle, and he does the rest. He goes out left, untouched into the end zone for 65 yard touchdown. The Cobras block the kick, so it's 6 0 Pirates. Hudson finds itself in the red zone again on their next drive. Another handoff this time to Angle, and this time he bangs into the end zone for a 15-yard touchdown. It's 14 to nothing after a two-point conversion is successful. Next, Cobras drive. Luke Griner hands it to Peyton Crawford, the bell cow for the Cobras, and he goes 74 yards. It's a race to the end zone, but he does get stopped at the one-yard line, and it's okay, though, because three plays later on a direct snap to Crawford, he scurries into the end zone going around left. The Cobras, however, fail a two-point try. And so it's only 14 to 6 after that one. And that comes back to haunt the Cobras. Signe Kyoto falls 28 to 26. Fairfield lost to Pella 56 to 7. In college football, Truman State travels to Quincy Saturday. Bulldog redshirt quarterback Randy Schroeder has been effective because he's not afraid to pull the trigger. We had a great preseason uh, throwing the football accurately, decisively, quickly. Um, and that has carried over. I think he's been 60% completion and, and uh, gets better each, each week out. Schroeder has had time to throw it because of the improved play in the offensive line, but the big fellas up front have also opened up some big holes for Andy Satula. He's an old school back. I think he's carried it 62 times the last two weeks, and, and he's assured me the ball doesn't weigh very much, so he's willing to carry it. Uh, but he's been durable, been reliable, been consistent, uh, gets tough yards. If you can't make it to Flint Stadium for the game, no problem. We'll have all the action on KTVO CBS starting at 11 o'clock. Don't forget the watch party at the Dukem. It gets underway at 10 o'clock. 
The Kansas City Royals have taken a commanding two-game lead in the World Series. The Royals broke it open in the fifth. They scored four times. Escobar and Moose both drove in runs. Eric Hosmer had a two-run single. Johnny Cueto looked great on the mound. He only allowed two hits. The Royals win it 7-1. In college basketball, the Truman State women's team has been picked third in the GLVC preseason poll in the West. The Bulldogs have exhibition games next week against Western Illinois and SIU Edwardsville. Staying on the hardwood, Indian Hills is ranked seventh in the junior college preseason poll. The Warriors will start its season on November the 7th against Rock Valley. In college soccer this afternoon, the Truman State men lost to Quincy 2-1, to one, while the women beat Quincy 2 to nothing. Teresa kicks around final weather right after you watch this.